Today on the spot. We get the new year started with demos of Pretty 2 and Back to the Future Episode 1. We get the latest coming to WeShop channel and see what new releases are hitting store shelves. Today on the spot. Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Today on the Spot for 2011. I'm Sophia Tong. I'm joined by Chris Waters. Hello, Chris. Happy Hello, New Sophia, Year. Hello, and Happy New Year to you. I know, an exciting year. We've got a ton of stuff lined up. CES is literally a few days from now. Yes, I think Sean is leaving on a jet plane in like 48 hours. That's crazy. You are probably too. No, I'm not. But I do have a special announcement. We are holding a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 tournament for you guys out there if you want to sign up through Jody Robinson or Capcom Unity. Nice. We'll invite 64 players to come into the GameSpot offices and kind of, you know, beat each other up for a few hours. That sounds like a lot of fun. It is. I kind of want to just go spectate because I'm rubbish at Marvel vs. Capcom I know, Capcom I kind of want to see like who in our office is the best. Yeah. So we'll kind of check that out. That'll be cool. But we have a great show lined up for you guys today. A couple of demos this week on the Wii Shop channel. But first, let's kick it off with a GameSpot news desk. Hey everybody, it's a GameSpot news update for Tuesday, January 4th, 2011. I'm Tor Thorson. The new year comes a new record, courtesy of Nintendo. Today the company announced that DS sales have surpassed 47 million units in the United States alone, making it the nation's best-selling video game system of all time. That tally includes the original Nintendo DS, which was released in 2004, as well as the DS Lite in 2006, DSi in 2009, and the DSi XL in 2010. As for Nintendo's second record of 2010, the publisher said that for the third consecutive year, Wii sales in the U.S. totaled more than 7 million units. According to Nintendo, the Triple Crown effort is the first accomplished by a home console in the country. Nintendo went on to note that the Wii has now sold more than 34 million units in the U.S. alone. Tomorrow night, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer will show off his company's latest wares at the 2011 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Although his emphasis is typically the Windows operating system, there is a portion of the presentation dedicated to Microsoft's console gaming venture, the Xbox 360. Now it appears that one of the surprises for the game section may have been blown. Gaming blog Glimpse Dog has published what appears to be a slide for a new service called Avatar Connect. Though no supplemental information was available, and Microsoft hasn't commented on the matter, the slide does show Xbox Live avatars jumping and squatting, the implication being that they will be able to be controlled by bodily movements. For full rundown of events, check out GameSpot's coverage of CES 2011 starting tomorrow. Well, that's it, your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, January 4th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back. It's our first daily demo. I have Brendan Sinclair here. I stole him from the news desk. And you're here to talk about Prinny 2, the dawn of Operation Panties, dude. Yeah, that's probably the right subtitle. <laughs> I haven't memorized it yet. But uh, yeah, this is a uh, sequel to Prinny, Can I Really Be the, the Hero, hero? Yeah. Dude, I think. <laughs> which was like, they took the uh, exploding penguin sidekicks from the Disgaea series. Mm -hmm which is like this tactical turn-based strategy thing. And they made a like super hardcore 2D platformer out of them. Yeah. Like the, the closest reference point might be Ghosts and Goblins. Mm hmm Because this game- tough. This game is hard. And you have swords. This game, they give you a, uh, a, a stock of 1,000 lives <laughs> in order to make it through the game. And you will need at least several hundred of them. Yeah, I know, I previewed this and I definitely went through a handful. So, you're already in the game here, and yeah. I guess if you've played the first one, it looks pretty similar, I mean, same yep. kind of like lush environment. Hey, there's a double jump, I got a butt stomp, I got a hey, little, little pirouette, thing. And, uh, leads into a dash, and then everything gets stylish when you when you jump up and attack in the air with your, your knives. Yeah, so the control-wise, I feel like it stayed the same. I mean, still, when you jump in the air, you can't really move. Like, you're kind of limited to that vertical yep. space. It's the uh, the double jump is your only chance to move. Yeah. So, like, normally if you jump, yeah. you're committed to it. And it's not like Mario, where if you tap it and then let go really quickly, you do a small jump. Yeah. It's like, is... that is the height of your jump every time, no matter what. Yeah, so not too much control, but that's kind of what's part of the challenge. Yep. And there's different difficulty settings. But what's new, I noticed that this game has a baby mode, which you're not on, because if you are in baby mode, you see these diapers in the top left corner. And, no, that's uh... actually one of the great things about... <laughs> so the first, uh, the first printy game, had standard mode and like hardcore mode. Yeah. 
Hardcore mode was if you got hit once, you died. Right. Standard mode was you could be hit three times. In this game, you may have noticed I started, uh, the life is in the top left corner, some mm -hmm. little scarves. I, I'm on standard mode and it only starts you with two scarves. Ah, so what was Check standard mode here. in the original mm -hmm. is now baby mode. <laughs> and in the original, standard mode was no joke. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty tough. And But in baby mode, not only do you get um, the extra diapers, you can also pick up diapers, so you can kind of refill that meter. And there's also these safety blocks that you'll see throughout the level, which kind of protect you from, I don't know, bombs and like other falling items. So you can kind of get, you're kind of protected from them. So it, it actually does help quite a bit if you don't want to go through like the other tortuous process. Yeah, so like, oh. Well, as soon as I start to talk about it, I absolutely lose my, my combo. <laughs> this is, uh, most of the game is, is very, very similar to the first one. Yeah. Uh, one of the differences is the combo meter. Right. In the first game, the, the you would collect these, oh, I died. That's okay, the checkpoint's right there. I'll get used to that. <laughs> uh, you have like 999 left. <laughs> yeah, you, you would collect these, uh, these desserts and other candies throughout the level, and they would, uh, they would fill this gauge the same way that it's doing right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, right now, instead of like putting me into the super mode that I'm in right now, it yeah. would just give you an item. Ah. So instead I'm in the super mode and that lets me do things like my pirouette can damage them. I could do like this Prinikazi thing too. Ah, the Prinikazi. Let's see if I can get that to work. <laughs> and I couldn't. <laughs> so it's there like a go. break mode now. Yeah, yeah, so you just like plow through things. Now so the, it kind of gives you an advantage. It w it's a nice super attack, but that that spent through my, you know, my my combo meter, and put me back at square one on that one. Ooh, yeah, almost like a metal slug here. <laughs> if I can get in the thing. So we're seeing a bit of the gameplay. So the story uh, is about panties. I guess somebody stole Etna's panties. Yeah. And now the prinnies are responsible for getting them back. Yep, and it's it's weird. It's Disgaea's sense of humor all That's the way true. through. I mean, I mean, last time it was about cake or like the ultimate dessert. Yes. Yeah. Your your demon mistress Etna wanted the ultimate dessert and basically would kill as many prinnies as possible uh, in order to get that dessert. You yes. may have think you know you may think I meant to say uh, as many prinnies as necessary, but I think. Uh, the way she runs her operation, as many as possible, is the best way to do it. <laughs> that is very true. Okay. So uh, and I just keep dying. <laughs> but are you having as much fun as you did with the original? Yeah, I mean, it's this is not the kind of game that is good to talk and yeah. play at the same That's time. That's why I have you doing it and not me. Uh, so I, I'm looking a little bit worse than I would normally <laughs> here. Not, not too much, Just smile and nod. So when does the game come out and on what platform? PSP. Yes. January 11th. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by. And you can continue playing and maybe try to beat that level. Yay. In the meantime, we're going to check out what's happening this week on the Wii Shop Channel. This week on Wii Shop Channel, in WiiWare, if you like allergies but are not allergic to video games, try Sneezies. Use your Wii Remote to drop bursts of sneezing powder into a field of floating Sneezies and watch as they sneeze themselves out of their bubbles in a chain reaction. Play through 45 levels in classic mode, or unleash your skills on 15 challenge modes. Next, all the ghosts have escaped from the spirit world in Ghost Mania. Help Becky and Tim, a pair of ghost guardians, catch runaway ghosts by building and expanding colored stacks of ghosts and blocks. The game features single player modes, including a relaxing and thoughtful puzzle mode and an arcade mode, as well as a variety of two player modes, such as Battle and Enduro. After that, WiiWare is dropping a demo for Robox. You're a lost robot stranded on a strange planet. Solve puzzles, jump, fight giant bosses, and gain enough power to find your way home. And Nintendo DSiWare, get indie with all play Jason Roar Anthology. This collection brings the best of independent gaming to the Nintendo DSi, including Passage, Gravitation, and Between. Then keep your gray matter sharp with Word Searcher 2. Complete 100 themed word search puzzles and categories from palindromes to pirates. Finally, round out your week with a drum solo in Music on Drums. Utilize a library of 160 sounds and 8 tracks to produce a percussion masterpiece. Combine 8 patterns to compose up to 64 songs, then DJ your music in real time. That's all the time we have, folks. Join us next week for more This Week on Wii Shop Channel.
And now it's on to the first new releases feature of the new year. Yay, yay, new releases. This week in new releases, the list is short, but there's a couple of notable console exclusives worth your buying dollar. Coming exclusively on the Wii this month is Hudson Soft's Lost in Shadow. This innovative platformer is about a youth whose shadow is severed from his body and it's your goal to reunite them. With innovative motion controls, you'll adventure through 11 chapters and more than 50 stages. After that, South End Interactive brings Ilo Milo exclusively to the Xbox 360. The goal of each of the 49 levels is to unite Ilo and Milo. Each start in a separate part of the level and must work together to meet in the middle. Players can change control between Ilo and Milo, or two players can control each one separately. Levels are made of various cubes, some of which Ilo or Milo can pick up and carry in order to place elsewhere in the level, opening paths for each other to travel on. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. Hey everyone, and welcome to our second demo of the day. We have Back to the Future, the game, and I have Carol here to yeah. show us what the game's about. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's a telltale adventure game. It's very much in the kind of point and click classic adventure game style. And uh, let's just jump right in. I think that fans of the films will kind of immediately be sucked in by how the game uh, kicks off, so it's, uh, you know, let's take a look at that. Yeah, instead of talking about it, maybe we'll just show it because it's easier, because there's a lot of details for people who are really into the movies. Yeah, I, I agree. So. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1 18 a.m., and this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me! The car! The car! If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, oh, you're gonna see some serious shit. I just... No, no, that he swears. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, finally you have a little input here. Um, you can kind of choose the dialogue a Yeah, bit. you know, one of the lines being the actual line he says from the, from the films. You, you play as Marty. And, uh... I think when you hear him speak, ah, Jesus Christ! It sounds Jesus so much Christ like Michael J. Fox. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's not Michael. Not it is Christopher Lloyd playing Doc. Ready. It's a it's a sound alike playing uh, Marty, but he really nails the part, and it's it's just great throughout the whole episode to hear him because he really adds to the authenticity of the whole the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so. Um, at this point, maybe we can jump ahead. Skip ahead a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So let's jump ahead and get check out the gameplay. Okay. Uh, okay. So here we are. Um, this is uh, where you finally actually really take control of Marty, and this is actually Doc's house. The basic story is Doc's been missing uh, since the end of Back to the Future Three, and the city is fixing to sell off um, all his stuff. Of course, uh, again, lots of details here that fans of the movies will, I think, immediately remember with the, the huge amp there and stuff. But <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, we'll just show off a little bit of like uh, this, this area of the game and, and what goes on here. Um, so, um, so you do have the freedom to kind of move around yeah, and then point over in, it, like... Exactly. You, and then unfortunately, there is Biff, uh, <laughs> Marty's ancient uh, nemesis, uh, hanging out. And uh, 
So he's going to pose a bit of a problem here. But uh, here's the, the famous model of the uh, Hill Valley Town Square. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You got to hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Oh, Biff. So, yeah, Biff is just still still a constant nuisance. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. <laughs> oh, I, but really, can I? <laughs> I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! So obviously, we don't want uh, Doc's journal to fall into Biff's hands <laughs> here. Um, so we can, uh, we can figure out a way to get it back, to get it back from him. Um, so there's still the hint system that's yeah. kind of built in, like with all Telltale games. Exactly, which is which is really nice, and it's it, you know it's it'll start off with like just a hint, a little nudge in the right direction, and then move on to being more and more specific. So, um, you know, I, I felt most of the puzzles in the game are really kind of logical and, and make sense. But if you do get stuck, it's it's nice that it, that is there for you to to refer to, so you never run into that like frustration of just banging your head against the wall. Hey, um, Dad. Why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Okay. Okay, so you have an inventory. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, so let's check out the inventory, actually. Uh, there is, of course, Marty's guitar, uh, which we want to use. Uh, use this, of course, with the amp. Here's an oldie, bloody goodie. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> you're right, Mr. McFly. Here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. So Dad's wow, a, that was sizzling hot. A little overprotective of, of Marty here, and Marty kind of he needs to learn to fight his own battles if if he's gonna get that. Uh, oops, no, Marty. No, let's <laughs> go back over here. Talk to Dad. Um, and uh, hey, Dad, to leave him alone. Should we show the puzzle, or should we let people figure it out for themselves? Uh, About Biff. Yeah, we Dad, can. Yeah, maybe we can let people figure help. it out. But suffice to say, big uh, game, you know, but using a little creativity so here, I've um, been dealing with him a few things a long happen, time. and before you know Believe it, um, me, I can handle the DeLorean shows okay. up, and Marty's off on another one of his crazy, crazy time-traveling <laughs> adventures. So and, uh, the majority of the play okay, game son, kind of plays out this way. Yeah, exactly. It's it's totally a traditional point-and-click adventure. But uh, it's got a it's got a really good story, you know. It, it it's uh, funny, and the puzzles are, are worked in really well. Mm -hmm. So I think I think anyone who uh, enjoys point and click adventures mm -hmm. and has any interest whatsoever in Back to the Future should check this game out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's already out on the PC. It, it is. It's out on PC. And you can get it at Telltale Games' website. Uh, yeah. And it's also coming out on the PS3 a little later. I don't believe they've announced the date quite yet. That's right. All right, well, thank you so much for stopping by and My showing pleasure. us the game. My pleasure. Thank All you. All right, and now on with the rest of our show. Okay. And that brings us to our first trivia giveaway of the new year. Are you sensing a theme? All right, so what do we have today? Sophia, we have box. Mystery box will reveal we have t-shirt, and as you'll notice, it's Lord of the Rings themed. Yes. War in the North. Let's see what's in the box. Let's see what's in okay, the box. So in here, we've got Ooh. some shot glasses and some cider. Sorry, I believe these are alcohol. toasting glasses, Toasting glasses? Sophia. Oh, are they? Yes, you can see that nice little design right. on them here. Because mm -hmm. it was Tolkien's mm -hmm. birthday yesterday, and every year people toast, you know, great author. 
Lots of books. Toast his lot. works that have inspired fantasy writers and readers for generations. Exactly. So for one lucky winner, we will give you this toasting box package. And so for some other winners, we'll give you a t-shirt. Now, we have three questions for you guys today. If you can answer all three, the first person to answer all three will win the box. And everybody else who can get at least one right will give you a t-shirt. So, first question, what does JRR stand for? Second question, on what continent was Tolkien born? And last question, what is the name of the pub where JRR and C.S. Lewis would meet to discuss their works? Now, if you have the answer, you can email them to us at onthespot at gamespot.com or submit it in the answer trivia module on the side of the page. Now before you folks run off to try to win yourself this pretty little package, we've got one more treat in store for you. It's a quick video teaser taking a look at some of our most anticipated games of 2011. Have a look. It's a new year and you know what that means. It's time to take a look at some of the biggest games hitting in 2011. Here, in no particular order, is a preview of some of the games that will be featured in GameSpot's most anticipated of 2011. Mass Effect 3. Bioware Sci-Fi RPG continues in a third installment that sees Commander Shepard make his way to Earth, which has fallen under attack by the Reapers. Our first glimpse of the game has come in the form of a trailer that revealed a devastated London landscape, but we're excited to see what else Mass Effect 3 has in store. Mass Effect 3 is currently scheduled for release on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC in Q4 2011. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 it's been over 10 years since the last game, but Marvel and Capcom have finally teamed up once again to deliver Marvel vs. Capcom 3. This 3 on 3 fighting game features the same frenetic action of its predecessor, as well as a mixture of returning and new characters, like Devil May Cry's Dante and Marvel's master of one-liners, Deadpool. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is scheduled for release on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 on February 15th. Batman Arkham City there's no question that the excellent Batman Arkham Asylum left us wanting more of Rocksteady's rendition of the Cape Crusader. And from the looks of it, this sequel will deliver. Batman Arkham City expands on the previous game in just about every way. Batman will have a larger arsenal of fancy gadgets and attacks for dispensing justice, as well as a much larger swath of land to do what he does best. Batman Arkham City is due out on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC in Q3 2011. Mortal Kombat. After dabbling with other formulas, Mortal Kombat is returning to its roots in the latest installment. While fights take place on a 2D plane, the game still features detailed 3D interpretations of classic MK fighters and environments. And of course, what would any Mortal Kombat game be without over-the-top brutality and ever-popular fatalities? Mortal Kombat is scheduled for release on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in Q2 2011. Gears of War 3 Get those chainsaws ready, Marcus, Dom, and other members of Delta are back from war in Gears of War 3. After the destruction of Jacinto in Gears of War 2, Delta Squad finds itself on the island of Vectus where they continue to fight the Locust as well as the infected Lambent. Gears of War 3 will feature an assortment of new weapons as well as new multiplayer options including a 4 player cooperative mode. Gears of War 3 is scheduled for release on the Xbox 360 in late 2011. Infamous 2. The electrifying Cole McGrath has a new playground in this follow-up to the original Infamous. Inspired by the city of New Orleans, New Mirai will feature all new enemies for Cole to fight, including members of the militia attempting to maintain control, as well as the Corrupted, a group of mutants created by the powerful Ray Sphere device. Infamous 2 is scheduled for release sometime in 2011. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. It's hard not to get excited any time a new Zelda game is in development and Skyward Sword is no exception. The latest in the long-running adventure series features a distinct art style and full Wii Motion Plus support, giving you full control over Link's sword attack and other abilities. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword is scheduled for release on the Nintendo Wii later this year. The Last Guardian Given the development team's previous work with Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, Team Ico's The Last Guardian has us excited. The Last Guardian seems to blend elements of Team Ico's two previous efforts as a young boy must maneuver his way through a landscape with the help of a large beast who will give aid along the way. The Last Guardian is due out on the PlayStation 3 in Q4 2011. Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception 
We've seen him in the jungle, we've seen him in the snow. Now it's time for Nathan Drake to venture into the vastness of the desert in Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Expect more details on the relationship between Drake and mentor Sully, as well as more of the intense action set pieces that the series is known for. Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception is scheduled for release on the PlayStation 3 on November 1st, 2011. Star Wars The Old Republic A massively multiplayer online RPG set in the same universe as the Knights of the Old Republic and it's developed by Bioware? What's not to like? In addition to Jedi, The Old Republic offers a number of character classes ranging from Jedi and Smuggler to Sith Warrior and Bounty Hunter. To top it all off, the game will also feature space combat for those who choose to venture out into the stars. Star Wars The Old Republic is scheduled for release on the PC later this year. Check back next month for the full feature list of GameSpot's most anticipated games of 2011. So that about wraps up our first episode of 2011, but there's more coming up this week. That's true, we're shipping off a whole buttload of GameSpot editors to CES 2011. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be reporting live from the show floor in Las Vegas on Thursday and Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific. You don't wanna miss it, folks, be sure to tune in. That's true, and we'll be back for our usual episodes starting next week. So until then, I'm Sophia Tong. And I'm Chris Waters. We'll see you guys next time. Now before you folks go running off to try to win yourself this little bad boy over here, well, now before, you, now before you folks scurry off to try to win yourself this pretty little package, we got one more treat in store for you. It's a video look at uh, the, uh, the video.